Good morning, everyone. How are you? Uh, it's Friday, June 12th. I can't even believe how long this has all been going on. And now it looks like it's going to even be going on even longer, right? Because of everything. Ay, 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 ay. First of all, I want to thank all of you for sending me pictures of your Sequoia sampler. I, as I mentioned Wednesday, I've kind of gotten goofed up with my Facebook. In fact, today I couldn't even believe it. To get onto Facebook, I had to set a new password and this and that. I guess Facebook book is a little mad at me right now. But anyways, um, thank you for sending me pictures. I would like to jam through them so you can see what everybody's doing. And, you know, it's so funny because when I say the word sampler, it just kind of makes me go bleh inside. These are spectacular. So this is Mary Rose's Sequoia. Uh, look, she's already quilted it, you overachiever, Mary Rose, you. And the part, like I said the other day, that I'm really paying attention to are what would be the blank areas where you might put your own flowers, your own pops or whatever. And I like that you use that rose fabric as your flowers. Good job. Okay, then this is Mary, unlike Mary Rose, and here's hers. This surprised me to pieces. How much fun is that with the black and the white? And I have to tell you guys, I love checkerboards and stripes and all that. I think it gives it just dynamics. My cat is coming near over here. And now we have Barbara's on the floor, and I think she said that she did this from her stash and it looks like there's a lot of repros in it. So nice job. And I do see the little birdie hiding there. Yay. Oh, and Elizabeth Bender, thank you for getting back to me. Um, you're the one I lost. You're the one where I knew I was in trouble on Facebook. Uh, this is just spectacular. Hey, you guys, and just like in quilting, those daisies that are on the two side verticals, Notice how they are not, well, all of them, they're not staying within the confined area. Yay, love that. I mean, so many of the things that we're learning with quilting design are consistent across the board. Oh, whoops, that's the close-up of today. I think we might get to that. And then Rondi got her sewn together. And I, I love the use of the stars in that. I mean, Rondi has a serious red, white, and blue collection. <laughs> Now, if I didn't, oh, I realize there's some people down below I didn't show or not. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there we go. Here's Denise's sampler. Okay, beautiful. I'm not sure if I showed this Wednesday or not. Um, and it looks like you stuck pretty much to this collection, which is just lovely. All right. And then here is Alicia bound already overachievers i love you guys god it's so cute i just and i oh I, let me go back to hers i love your crazy corners i love it it gives it a real primitive look okay and then here's joanne's oh this is the one that was done from the um 1875 fabric sorry about the other one i i actually recognize a lot of those fabrics i got a pretty good collection too and then here's Karen's. Wow. Wow. And then look how Karen cut fruit out at the bottom uh, around the picture. That is just fabulous. So again, thank you so much. I think one of the things that a couple of you have said to me that makes me very, very happy it's that you were kind of in, stuck and it got you out of your stuckness. And frankly, it got me out of my stuckness too. So let me show you. Um, finally, we've got the fabrics in for our, I'm calling it the Cafe Facet Mystery Sampler Class. I don't know what I'm doing. You're gonna have to follow me. This is gonna be the blind leading the blind. But uh, I wanna show you, we've got the solids in, we're cutting like mad. Well, face, let me get these up. Let me wear these. Okay, I'm wearing these. Maybe I need to stand up. All right. Okay, look at this. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is fabulous. The capes are half yard cuts. These are fat quarters of which the one I cut a couple colors. The colors that are not cut beautifully. You can be sure I had my hand on them. Let's see. What did I cut? I think I cut the purple and I cut, I think this, and then I cut the two oranges. 
right here in my sewing room. But I didn't I didn't stack them. Suzanne is very picky at the store on how it's stacked. And I can guarantee you mine would not look this good. Then the other thing we're offering are optional one yard cuts of white. You don't have to get it in the kit. And um, I will be using white with mine. I think it will help make it really pop. So it goes on sale Monday morning. And we have plenty if you order Monday. If you, oh, I had this hanging on me. If you uh, wait till after Monday, I can't guarantee, but we did order double of what we had a Sequoia sampler. But again, just don't wait, okay? Now, another thing I want to talk about the lessons that we're doing now, which are beautifully quilted, and, and it starts with the base things that I learned from Lucy Hilty, the Mennonite woman, and it's going to extend into even straight line quilting. This is the book that was written based on it. I hate my picture on it, so I put this here. If you're from Canada, don't order the book, okay? The book is $16.95, and yesterday and today I got orders from Canada, and the shipping was $25. And so you can, and actually everybody, you can go to, uh, I do have copies here. I'd be happy to ship, but I'm, I just, I can't, I can't. My dad's coming out and me. You guys, you can't order if you're from Canada. Just go get the ebook. That's just ridiculous, ridiculous money to ship it. <clears throat> okay, but anyways, um, what was my point? Oh yeah, there's the ebook. There's this. I do have plenty. Yeah, that's that's all I want to say about that. But and I and if it's twenty five bucks to Canada, I can't even imagine what it would be overseas. It's just I said to John. I, I don't get it. Canada, you know, and I haven't shipped to Alaska yet, so I don't know what that situation will hold. But if I get, if I get something that I think is unreasonable, I contact you personally and then let you make a choice. And <laughs> yesterday the gal said, oh, I really wanted your autograph, but not that bad. <laughs> so, you're a smart woman. Okay. So uh, last but not least, I, uh, Quilter Select Rulers were always coming out with new ones, and I put this on my Facebook, what happened? Come on, 15 minutes before class, and we're asking people to vote one by 12 or one and a half by 12. And I will tell you, one and a half by 12 is uh, winning like a landslide. So if you wanna vote, don't vote here, please. Just go on my Facebook page and vote there. But I can tell you right now, one and a half won. So thank you, you guys, I really appreciate it. We go back and forth and back and forth within the Q uh, Quilter Select team. And finally I said, Kay, just get me an image and let's ask the people what they want because we are doing it you know, for you, right? So um, let's get back to our PowerPoint and I've got to remember how to do this. I think I'm good at that, kind of. Um, here we go. Don't want to say, um, that's not becoming. I do want to say that I did, let me get rid of that. I did, okay, you're welcome, Mary Rose. Why is it my PowerPoint coming up? Why are you looking at this? What the heckity heck? Let me go back to here. Okay. So I want it. Oh, I know. I'm doing it in the wrong order. All right. Here we go. It's going to come up, and then I'm going to share my screen. Okay, John, we got a problem in Houston here. Um, where do you go to order your mystery quilt? Terry Thorpe, you will go to thequiltshow.com on Monday and place your order. It'll be on the front page. John, why isn't this working? Here he comes. Go to the side and where if you have the big P, it says... Here, come on over and help me. The presentation, right? The big P. Well, PowerPoint, yeah, right here. Click on PowerPoint. I did. It's not coming up. The rulers are with quilting, quilters select... Um, dot com or it's quilter select look it's not coming up oh this is not good oh, I'm, like, oh God, I'm such a moron now we're talking okay <laughs> clicking on the screen oh heaven help me um what we're going to be doing with this pattern it's all okay i gotta open recent it's all 
we're going to take, I'm going to take blocks out of the quick and easy block tool that you'll want to order too, if you don't have that. And then, um, and then we will just randomly go through blocks there. And I will try and do things that are not too mind boggling. Cause remember I have to piece them too. All right. Here's where I want to go. This is what we ended up with yesterday or Wednesday, right? Yes. So I want to just say, and I went through quickly that, okay, so you take this particular pattern. It was beautiful as a red work. There's original drawing. Um, it just takes me down to good design is good design. So here is a bowl that I saw in Mexico. And I just kind of went, oh my gosh, that really does say it all. Because no matter what environment you're in, design seems to be a universal thing that if it's good, it's good. And if it's not good, it's not good. Can you imagine what a beautiful central medallion this would be? So back in the day, I don't remember what year it was, but I know some of you will, and you can type it in there. There was a, an exhibit in New York City at the Armory, and it was a woman's 600 red and white quilts that she gifted the city an exhibit for a weekend. And I actually spoke there and there were people coming in from all over the United States to see it. It was simply spectacular. And then people would say, well, wh where else is this exhibit going to show? Well, it's not. It was in the armory. And it was her, I think, 70th birthday present to the city of New York. And one of the things that was really cool was that by Sunday, the last day of the exhibit, you had people from all over New York coming in that weren't even quilters. Um, my friend Julie Scribner that worked at PMB at the time, as soon as she saw it on Thursday, she said, I got to get there. And I think it took her almost like 12 hours to get there on planes, not walking um, from California. And she said, I'm exhausted. I'm ever so grateful that I went. Now, what happened to me when I got in there was all of a sudden I, be, I was overwhelmed. It was a sensory overload. So I decided to focus in on the quilting design. And so look at this. So much of my quilting design heritage comes from the quilters before us. I think this is absolutely spectacular. And now with our cell phones, there is with cameras, I mean, there's no reason you just cannot document, document, document. Here was another one. I, it's spectacular. And look how the quilting is crossing over into the pieced surface. That must be applique. I'm kind of looking at it up close here. It must be applique. Now, here's the other thing is when you do quilting, you might want to do a garment or something like that. And all I want to say is that if you're doing a garment, please be careful and think about where you're putting your motifs. Just saying. <laughs> It was Mary Mashuda's class, and actually she was one of our legends at thequiltshow.com, um, Mary Mashuda, and she kept walking by and saying, you might, you might want to think about where you're putting those, those motifs, and I'm like, yeah, 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 what does she know? I didn't even realize, and I put the vest on, and there it was. I never wore it. Okay, so now let's talk about corners when you're on a border. Corners can be really, really tricky. Now, in the olden days, I used to say, number one, far left. Well, they didn't know what to do, so they ran off. And that would have been a big no-no back in the olden days. Well, I will tell you now, if I were doing a Gwen Marston quilt, the late Gwen Marston, or I were doing, even like this um, sampler we're doing, if it's real funky and funny, um, why not run it off? Who says it has to be perfect? Okay, the middle one, it's obvious that the quilt maker does not know how to turn the corner and has gotten themselves into a pickle. So that would be my least favorite of the three. And then the far right one is a beautifully turned corner. When you start looking at quilting designs, zero in, if there's a border pattern, zero, pay attention. Pay attention to what is going on and how the quilt maker solved that situation. So here's my parents' front porch of their house. Well, not that. Who wants to see that? 
I don't even, I don't, you know what? I don't even know how to read a spreadsheet, if you can believe it. Um, I, mean, I really don't know how. I don't know how I got through school, to tell you the truth. Okay, this is my parents' front porch of their house. And I was looking at it going, well, wouldn't that be a really interesting border? So, and I'm not saying exactly as is, but there's something going on here. They they lived in a Victorian cottage built in 18, I think 1888. So here is my rendition of that border. Now, how did I turn the corner? I turned the corner like how I taught you to do that tulip on Wednesday. I simply folded the paper and mirrored through and it turned it for me. And it's beautiful. It was very cool if I don't say so myself, and it was quite um, simple to do. So then let's go to this one. So here's a earlier quilt of mine. In the olden days, I would spend minimal time piecing and most of the time at the frame. It was the way I could, you know, get my hands on the cloth, but not have to worry about young, curious fingers all over the house, which would slash my children. So let's look at the, um, corner on that one. How that corner came about was basically I did a, a cable on both sides and then I turned one of the cables into feathers and you can see how it weaves in and out with each other. Also this was, you can barely see it, but on the bottom right this is the first time I ever used metallics in a quilt, the double feathered wreath, and it was really quite stunning. And it was before metallics are what they are today. So, again, inspiration is everywhere. Can you imagine this? If this wonderful flower were um, inter, I guess it would be interwoven with each other or interlaced with each other, it would be quite stunning. What's this one? Oh, and then this is the same house, just so um, for those of you in the Bay Area, this was Bernice Stone's house. This radiator is, it's a beautiful design. And if you think about it, it's reminiscent of a church window. Um, you see this design in many, many places. This would be a lovely border. And when I was at Bernice's, I was just like sitting there and I, and I saw that little border. And actually that's a classic border that is used in hand quilting and machine quilting and long arm quilting. Now, not always will everything show. Like if you have a highly printed fabric, I think we went through that on Monday. So you might just want to consider a crosshatch grid, all right, in the body of the quilt. On the upper left, that is an extremely classic design, extremely, and I go to that a lot. Then here to the right, if you want to triple your quilting time, yay, but that's pretty effective. And then down at the bottom left, I've done this now by machine as well as by hand. And when we get later on, I'm going to talk about this on a diagonal because on a machine, it can get your quilt kind of funky. And then the bottom right is just a um, tile pattern. So at Bernice's house again, it was like, okay, so if I am going to use that uh, a grid, why not do two different grids? I mean, this is absolutely smashing, and I would not have thought to have done that. You know, I think so much of being an artist, and we are artists, it's really just keeping your eyes open to what is going on around you. So this is an older quilt of mine, and I knew that nothing, I actually think I sold this quilt. I knew that nothing was really going to show on it, like feathers and all that fancy stuff. And I didn't really want to do a crosshatch grid on it. So how, if you look very carefully, there's soft wavy lines going throughout it. And this is a fabulous technique, whether you're machine quilting or hand quilting. There you go. Oh good, I'm glad that slide was in there. See how soft and curvy? Now look to the bottom left, okay? And you can kind of see a rainbow arc that is too tight of a curve. You could end up with really odd shapes when, the, when it all comes together, so keep it open. So how I do it is I start with the left and I just get some organic lines. 
And then I sh oh, shadow, echo quilt it. That's the word, echo quilt it. And then because it's soft and curvy on the inside, and, and the first day I told you that I like to mix geometrics with soft curvy lines, I'll put some sort of geometric in the border. And it works just absolutely beautifully. So now let's talk about this, okay? Uh, Sue Garman was here, the late Sue Garman. Oh, how we miss her and we miss her work. Um, in fact, the uh, block of the month this year for thequiltshow.com is a remake of Afternoon Delight of Sue's. But anyway, she was a master quilter and a master uh, piecer and a master appliqueer. And we've done several shows with her at thequiltshow.com. And so I looked at this and I'm like, how do you even get to this? Because this is so foreign compared to the um, what I did with Lucy that was so, that it, Lucy's was very structured and formal and this is very whimsical. So this is what she taught me. You get in there and you just do some soft curved lines and then put a teardrop at the end of each of the um, endings, okay? Then you just start laying in the feathers. And if I were judging these feathers, I can tell you right now, I would think, oh, they're, they're not too cool but just have faith and keep going. So now I'm going down to the crack and I'm filling it in with an, another feather that I'm going to build with on, upon. See, there's that. And then let's see here. And last but not least, it's all filled in. So Lucy would roll over in her grave at this, but I will tell you a lot of people are doing fills like this and it's spectacular. So let's take a look at this quilt I did. It's called Sea Glass. And I love that that's back there. That needs to go. I know, I'll move it that way. I don't want to look at that. Okay, <laughs> Sea Glass. And it is cherry wood fabrics. And um, I just love those colors together. If you've never enjoyed cherry wood fabrics, it's, it's they're fab fabulous. So I didn't know how to quilt this at all. I hadn't a clue, didn't have a clue. So what I did was I put some big vellum pieces on top and because it was sea glass was the name of it and the feeling of it, I thought, why not do seaweed, okay? And then throw uh, in a uh, secentric se se <laughs> circles that are, <laughs> that are all aligned on each other as if a pebble were being thrown in water. And in looking at that, I thought this is not gonna translate into a quilting design. It is just, it's too, it's too much. So then I put this on top and drew, and I thought, oh, I really do love those circles and how, you know, if you filled up the whole space, that would be wonderful. And then I want you to look at the border. On the left-hand side, it's a very classic feather. Excuse me, on the top, it's kind of a new age feather. And so I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And then I had to think, then I was thinking, but remember, Alex, you have to quilt this. So think about what you're doing here. So what's next? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that has it, that is going on. But again, remember, Alex, you have to quilt it. So ultimately, what I did was send it to Paula Reed. <laughs> and I had her do it. I gave her the concept. Now, this ended up being a wedding quilt for uh, my son. I, I mean, my daughter and my son-in-law. And I also decided in working on it that I didn't care for just the circles on the outside border. So I used a wonky um, outer, outer border to kind of hold it all together. And I, I think this turned out quite nicely. So when all else fails, call your friends. Here's another one. This fabric is from Sonia Lee Barrington's collection that I purchased. And this is a really fun and easy way to make a modern, arty, fun quilt. I call this uh, Sticks and Stones. And it, it uh, you can see there's an inner border there, and that's created by value. We've talked about that in the past. And then you might ask, well, how did these colors come together? What did I do? Well, I found this fabric, and it was either Brandon's or Cape's, I forget which, 
and I thought it would be just absolutely fabulous to use the colors from this collection in order to do the quilt. And then I did machine quilt this and I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know how to machine quilt it. And then I went back to, okay, you want soft curvy lines. So I've got the little circles in the sticks and you want straight lines. So I have those in the background. Uh, I really do love this quilt a whole heck of a lot. All right. So this is the last quilt that I've hand quilted and it is silk and it's a variation of the quilt that I just showed you. And it was made because I did a quilt for Ami Sims for the Alzheimer's fundraiser. Uh, it had to be like 30 by 30 or something like that. And oh, I just wanted, I wanted to do this in a larger format. So I did it in Silk Dubiani. I want to point out on the inner border on the right hand side towards the bottom, I put in some little extra sticks just for some interest. And when you're working with Dubiani, you are definitely going to want to line the fabric before you cut into it. And I strongly recommend um, Quilter Select Fabric Prep. So I did prep all of this fabric and then I did hand quilt through it and it was like it wasn't even there. Now, <clears throat> this isn't right and I'm going to talk about this. And actually Libby Lehman and Ricky Timms are my friends because I said this isn't right and they said you're right. It's not right. So what happened was, let's talk about what's not right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first I did the First, I did the insides, okay? And that's all hand quilted, the little squares with the sticks, all right? And then I did the outside, which was the feather. And initially, the feather did not have the little caps on it because I just didn't do it. But I thought, oh, that just doesn't, it doesn't hold its own enough. It just doesn't hold its own. So I put the little caps on it. And note how the cap in kind of the center of the page is tipping up into the white inner border. What's wrong with it is that it should have more quilting behind the feathers. And Ricky and Libby said, yep, that's true. But the truth of it is people, it was bound, it was off the frame, and it was time to move on to other things. So that was that. Here is a quilt that we don't do this anymore, but we used to ask our guests to bring us a block at thequiltshow.com when they were a guest, a six inch block. And this is just like the first couple seasons, all right? Remember, you can join thequiltshow.com for $19.95 for six months. For six months, $19.95, that's it. And <clears throat> um, I was putting it together and Terry Lucas, in New York said, I will quilt it for you because she knew I, I was not real comfortable with machine quilting. And I was like, oh, great. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, no, this has to be from beginning to end of my hands. And so I thank you, Terry, for that. I really appreciate it. And by the way, your new book rocks. She has a new book coming out, you guys, Terry Lucas, and it's on machine quilting and thread color and all this good stuff. I don't think it's out yet. I think I just saw the digital copy of it, but I, you will really like it. Beautifully put together. So what I did was I, look at, I looked at each guest and their block. So for example, this is Jean Wells. And I thought, and this was many years ago. This was, gosh, like 12, 13 years ago. And I thought, now how would have Jean quilted this at that point? So I quilted it that way. Then... And this was a super learning process. Okay, this is Suzanne Marshall's. And look at that, you guys. Her Look at that bug. That is hand appliqued and then hand embroidered. And I thought, now how would Suzanne have quilted this? And I went and I studied her work and I came up with this. And I honestly don't know how Suzanne would have quilted this, to tell you the truth. But I thought it was a pretty good solution. Then this is Frida Anderson's. And this was the block that we did on her show and she did a miniature a six inch version of it and so I just went and looked carefully at the quilt to see to see how did she do it and this is how she did it and then this one's just gonna just slay you this is Nancy Brown's show and this is how she would have quilted this quilt just like this so 
truly, when you go to look, when you look at quilts, get past, I want to get out of this, mm, go away. How do I get back to my Ecamm? Here we go. I feel like Ricky right now. John, I can't get back to this. Um, let's see. Where's my Ecamm? There we go. There. <laughs> um, when you're looking at quilts, like when I went to that red work exhibit or the red and white quilt exhibit, just, just look at the quilt. You're going to want to study what they've done, but pay attention to how they're quilting, okay? Because this is how I've bumped up my vocabulary of quilting. Now, I'm gonna tell you there's still more. We haven't even gotten into what I would call the modern quilts and the contemporary art quilts. And that's what I'm gonna do on Monday, all right? And the contemporary art quilt stuff is not in this book. This ends with just basically what I learned from Lucy, the basics of it. And then John's coming in. I think he might have some questions or something. Question one. Oh, is that what I think it is? Oh, oh, oh. You can do a box opening. I gotta do a box opening. Okay. Is it? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Fusible applique has glue stick to the needle. How to fix? Oh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get alcohol swabs uh, and wipe off. But with Quilters Select, we don't do that. It doesn't stick. And that's one of the great things about it. But just a little, I know they're thread, I call them needle boogers, right? Um, steam is seen too light. Oh, with steam is seen too light. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, on um, Apple Web Plus or, or any of my fusibles, that doesn't happen. All right. It's not even fabric. Okay, so uh, Laura Downs introduced me to a new sort of jigsaw puzzle. And they actually closed down for um, COVID and they're back up now and it i ordered this two and a half weeks ago it's called liberty puzzles guess what i'm gonna be doing this afternoon okay but wait that's not even it you guys wait i i want to i don't want to open this one because there's a whole thing when you open it you can you can oh, that one's empty i i'm using these as my boxes as my props when you open it there's a, a smell that happens that's just ah because the puzzle pieces are wood they're expensive okay they are super expensive but they're also super hard to put together so like for instance this one is this was my first one I ever got. It was a Christmas present for my kids. Many of the pieces are shapes. They're shapes. All right. Um, here's some kind of sea animal. Uh, and they're weird. Look at the dancing girl. These things are super hard to put together, okay? You don't start with the outside edge. You just don't because the outside edge might just be a little point like this. I mean, I'll, I'm going to put this up today. One of the rules I have for myself is I can't work on it till I go for a walk. <laughs> Sit there for hours. And I didn't even know if my COVID brain can handle it right now. But and again, it's called Liberty, Liberty Puzzles, and it's out of Boulder, Colorado. Uh Again, they're not cheap, but but I earned it. <laughs> I've earned it. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited. So, okay. Let me go see if there's any other comments I should be looking at here towards the bottom. Um, can I do something to the fused fabric so it stops sticking? Applique. No, I don't think you want it to stop sticking, so I don't know. Okay. Oh, my friend had one of those puzzles. Fun. Oh, it, I'm telling you right now, it's it, it's it's your brain, your brain will explode with it. And uh, Gwen Marston isn't living. No, no, she had cancer and she passed about a year ago, which was a heartbreaker for everybody. Gwen Marston. All right, Costa Rica. Um, I just cannot believe all the different countries that are here. So remember, you guys. Um, Remember, you guys, if you want to get the these fabrics to play along with me, 
you will get a Monday. I don't know how much it's going to be. I don't know. If you need the, if I'm going to be working out of the quick and easy block tool, I suspect that that will be there too. But I also know a lot of you already have it. It's basically 110 blocks that are in five different sizes. I will probably choose to stay with the six inch size. Now, the only thing I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you this, I'm probably going to no, I'm not going to tell you because I'm still ruminating on what I'm going to do, but I have a pretty good idea. So um, have a great weekend. You know what I'm going to be doing. And then we, I think we'll be able to wrap this up on Monday. I'm not sure, but I'm, but I, well, no, maybe not. Cause I think I'm going to actually, do you guys want to show you me to show you on um, when I'm done, how I do straight line quilting, actually sewing on my machine, like using ruler work and stuff like that. I think that that might be a really good idea. Um, what color thread would you use on a red and white quilt? Oof, probably what I might do is do red on the top and white on the bottom. It would depend if I'm pressing my seams open or to one side. If I'm pressing to one side, probably white. You got another one, John? Just ask it. What color thread would you use on a red I'm answering that right now. Yeah. yeah. So you're just going to have to sew a couple pieces together, decide how you're going to press, and then just take a look-see at it. Because the same thing would hold, the same question would be, say, a black and white quilt or something like that. So, hey, you guys, I so appreciate you spending time with me. Um, actually, today, Adair is going to come over, and we've got to do some sort of video for her master's that she's getting so she can continue to be a librarian at the high school. And it's just all, oh, for machine quilting, ooh, what color thread for machine quilting? I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. Yike. I would um, just throw some white thread on it and see how, try, or maybe gray, or I, I don't know, just put some thread on top of it and make a decision. Yeah, oh, I'm glad I clarified that. So anyways, you guys, have a great weekend, and um, we'll see you Monday, and we're going to be getting into uh, more artsy-fartsy th art things. Art things. Bye. Yeah, I do sometimes say things. <laughs>